much around the world. And we do. As a matter of fact, too many times we try to flex our muscles in places that we have no business flexing muscles. Uh, trying to tell other countries what they can and cannot do. Uh, it's wrong. And uh, it gets us into a lot of trouble. And the main reason we do most of that anymore is the money. Is the money that's involved in it. The United States of America has a power that goes outside of our country. Notice this. In a broad new policy statement that is in its final drafting state, the Defense Department asserts that America's political and military mission in the post-Cold War era will be to ensure that no rival superpower is allowed to emerge in Western Europe, Asia, or the territory of the former Soviet Union. Are they succeeding? It's not going to happen, friends. We cannot go into other countries and, uh, and do what we want to do. You know, you take the look at Ukraine right now. You know, I don't agree with that president, but was that man duly elected in a democratic process? Yes, he was. Somebody said, well, he's a dictator. Well, the people put him in there. I mean, I don't like the one we got now, but I'm not going to rebel against the guy. You see, if the people put somebody in, other people, especially from other countries, need to stay out of their business, unless, of course, genocide or something like that is taking place. But we feel that we've got to be involved in the politics of every nation in the world. It says in Revelation 13, 12, he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell in you see how far reaching it is. It's going to reach beyond our own country into the whole world to have to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The sixth clue we have is to identification. It's going to change in character from that of a lamb to that of a dragon. He spake as a dragon, it said. And how does a nation speak? You see... A nation speaks through its laws, its, its legislative enactment. So it, they, it's talking about the legislation and cause will be to enforce what this power decrees. And this is what will eventually bring this around. And the nation speaks through its laws or legislative body today. All nations do that. Now, it said he exercised all the power of who? First the first beast. So what did that first beast do for 1260 years? Killed anybody that wouldn't submit to their laws, remember? So we see that he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. We have a death decree. We have a coming confederacy of religion and government, a church-state united type thing. Notice here what Tyler, uh, Alexander Tyler said. Democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until, watch this, and see if it's not happening today, it can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves money from the public treasury. Exactly. We see this being fulfilled just in our own life right now. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidate who promises the most benefits from the public treasury. This was written several years ago. As a result, a democracy always collapses over loose financial policy and is always followed by what? <laughs> Sounds like a bad dream, doesn't it? The average age of the world's greatest powers has been 200 years. We've reached that, haven't we? And we see this government 
changing in a way that is just absolutely unbelievable. How is this going to happen? What's going to enable this to take place? Well, for one thing, the Constitution upon which this country is founded will be gone. As a matter of fact, we have leaders now that say it's an outdated old document. We need to get rid of it and replace it. Including the guy who took the oath to uphold that Constitution. We are told in inspiration that the time is coming when we will repudiate every principle of our Constitution. So should we be amazed when we see this happening in our, before our very eyes today? Supreme Court Justice, several years ago, a very interesting man. We read some of the stuff he wrote, a very frightening man. But this is what Justice Rehnquist had to say. The wall of separation between church and state is a metaphor based on bad history. A metaphor which has proved useless as a guide to judging. It should be frankly and explicitly abandoned. Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, no separation of church and state. The church must do what the state says. In the St. Louis paper back in 91, as the second century of the Bill of Rights draws to a close, the Supreme Court is redefining what religious liberty will mean in the third century. Broadly, the court's new approach helps conventional religions while hurting unconventional ones. You see that? So the big popular churches will be helped, but the smaller, less popular churches will be hurt by what's taking place. This is from a secular paper. And it's happening, my friend. People like the moral majority, you don't hear a lot about them anymore, but these same people are still out there, at least most of them. Separation of church and state is a dangerous concept. This is because the phrase separation of church and state is not found in the Constitution, and the misuse of the phrase leads to all sorts of trouble. Now, they're right there. Separation of church and state is not found there, but what is found there is the government's got to stay out of church. Period. Not to make a law for or against one. Not to establish one or tear one down. Government has no business in church. And so it says it leads to trouble. Watch what he goes on to say. Such as trying to keep godly principles out of legislation. A thorough understanding of our Constitution is vital to our survival. Let's talk more like the Constitution and less like the bumper sticker. Wipe the phrase separation of church and state out of your vocabulary. You see, the government wants to control the church and the church wants to control the government. And both are wrong. Both are wrong. The, the principle is there. Don't try to mix them. Could it be that a return to God coerced by religious legislation will be seen as the answer to wanting moral values, economic collapse, and natural disaster? You know, I've said in meetings where these preachers present this all the time, trying to use these things here, the morals, the economy, and the disasters, to show that God is displeased and we've got to go back to Sunday worship. Watch this. For years, religious leaders in America have been persistently working to the end of establishing and enforcing religious standards by law. The moral majority is one group. The Lord's Day Alliance, over 18 million. The CCU, Churches of Christ United. The World Council of Churches. There's a whole list of them that, and that includes several millions of people seeking for the church to control the state. And on the other hand, you have all of the politicians wanting to control the churches. So... The Christian Coalition, some of you remember this guy very well, Ralph Reed. If Christians unite, we can do anything. We can pass any law or any amendment, and that's exactly what we intend to do. 
You see that? There's this uniting, and we'll see this in, in the next meeting. Protestantism, paganism, and Catholicism are uniting and setting up the whole framework for the institution of this prophecy being fulfilled in our very day. The right hand of God is who they think they are. Watch this one from W.A. Criswell. I believe that this notion of the separation of church and state was the figment of some infidel's imagination. Preached from pulpits all over. You know, Pat Robertson, he tried to run for president. It's a good thing he didn't make it. But I want you to see something about Pat Robertson. The next obligation that a citizen of God's world order owes is to himself. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy is the commandment for the personal benefit of each citizen. Interesting quote, isn't it? But watch where he goes. Higher civilizations rise when people can rest and draw inspiration from God. Laws in America that mandated a day of rest have been nullified as a violation of the separation of church and state. As an outright insult to God and his plan, only those policies that can be shown to have clearly secular purpose are recognized. When he's talking about the Sabbath, what's he talking about? He's talking about Sunday. And this is the direction that these guys are headed. And what we see taking place today is pretty much what we saw when we studied the third chapter of Daniel. State establishing an image, declaring that everybody had to worship the image or be put to death. Today we see this happening all over again. The Babylonian king, a powerful world leader, established a counterfeit image and compelled worship contrary to God's commandments. The issues that we face today, my friends, are several, a few of which are simply how do we worship and who do we worship? Do we worship the God of heaven or do we worship the beast and its image? The state tells us which one we are to worship. The state even tells us we cannot worship the first one. We can't even mention his name. You see, we have taken him out of schools and everywhere else. The other issue, the authority of God's word, loyalty to Christ and obedience to his commandments. Or do we disavow the word of God? Do we feel that we don't have to keep his commandments, but that we can do what the state tells us to say because Caesar is above God? Remember, that's why the early Christians died. Had they simply said, yes, Caesar is God, they could have lived. If they'd have thrown just a little bit of incense on an altar to Caesar, they would have turned them loose. But Caesar is not above God. Jesus himself said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but unto God the things that are God's. Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Who are they? Here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. This is what the whole issue is going to revolve around. Those who have God's seal, those who have the beast's mark. America, my friends, has forgotten the law of God. Not only forgotten it, it has outlawed the law of God. That law has been expelled from our schools, from our courtrooms, and from the hearts of the American people. As a result, we see the things that are going on in the world today. Do you know I personally, of course I'm a very, very young man, <laughs> just wanted you to know that one. <laughs> But I do not remember when I was in school and God was still in our schools, people coming to school with guns and killing other children. I don't remember that. 
Can any of you remember things like that from your younger days? And some of you are young. Can you remember from when? Just a few years back. But the further we move ourselves away from God, the worse things become. Because as we move away from God as a nation, the Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the world. And as soon, to put it literally, all hell is going to break loose. The angels holding the four winds will release those winds. And there will be a time of trouble such as has never been seen before. But right now, the Spirit of God is still working on the hearts of people. And Jesus is still reaching out to people to come to Him, to put Him first, and to make a decision that regardless of what man says, they will not worship an image. They will not receive a mark other than the seal of God. And they will be found ready and waiting when Jesus comes. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for your blessings to us. We thank you for your word you've given to us to be a light and a lamp to our feet. And I pray, dear Father, now that as we conclude this study and prepare for the next one, that your spirit would continue to watch over us, give us wisdom and guidance, Father. Help us, dear Lord, to have our minds and our hearts open to the teachings of your word and the promptings of your spirit is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.